Hello and welcome to this ClinEdge webinar. Um, we'll just wait a few minutes to let everyone get on the line and we'll begin shortly. All right, we can begin. Um, thank you for attending a new series of webinars hosted by ClinEdge. Um, my name is Georgia Ward. I'm a web and graphic designer at ClinEdge, and I'll be the session moderator today. Um, we will be hosting these webinars each month um, on various topics relevant to clinical research. Um, we're kind of focusing on operations and optimization, patient recruitment and retention, financial services, technology, and other topics. Uh, we'll be sourcing the most informative speakers from many different CROs, sites, and sponsors to present in our webinars to make sure they are the most informative and beneficial to you. There will be about 10 to 15 minutes at the end uh, for a question and answer session, so please submit your questions at any time in the box on the right-hand right -hand side panel of your screen. I'll be asking questions out loud at the end of the presentation. Um, and any questions not addressed may be answered in a follow-up blog post on our website. Um, I would like to introduce today's presenter, Nathan Levins. Nathan is a product manager at Realtime CTMS Software Solutions. Nathan has over eight years of clinical research experience and spent over four years as the quality assurance manager for one of the largest multi-specialty phase one through four research sites in the U.S. He has a deep understanding of the research site processes and regulatory challenges that shape our industry. He now teaches sites how to transition from paper-based regulatory systems to e-regulatory solutions, such as real-time e-docs, in order to boost efficiency, drive compliance, and improve collaboration between sites and sponsors. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to Nathan to begin. All right. Thank you, Georgia. Um, thank you for that nice introduction. I actually also wanted to say thank you for everybody that decided to attend this webinar. We had a lot of great response, a lot of people registered. And what that tells me is that people do have a great interest in the topic of e-regulatory. And a lot of you may even be looking for solutions to our current regulatory burden. During this presentation, I hope to shed some light on some current regulatory challenges that we're facing and even offer a viable solution for both sites and sponsors. To get started, I'll be presenting a global document management vision for our industry. I'll identify current regulatory challenges by research sites. I'll explain how an e-regulatory solution benefits both sites and sponsors. We'll describe steps on how to implement an e-regulatory system and then also we'll talk about ongoing e-regulatory study management and collaboration between sites and sponsors. Now at Real-Time Software Solutions, we have a vision for our industry. 
Sites will standardize their regulatory systems using site-based electronic systems, such as e-regulatory and e-stores, to streamline processes that make it easy to share data and records with sponsors. Now, a site-based solution like this, uh, such as these systems, will benefit both sites and sponsors. And just to cap or recap a few here, or go over a few before we get into the presentation, um, sites will have standardized processes and systems that create efficiency. They'll experience increased quality of study data and records. They'll even have improved compliance with regulations. Benefits for sponsors or CROs, they'll gain remote access and monitoring of all investigator site files. They'll have enhanced and more timely co collaboration with sites, and they too will have improved compliance with regulations. Now the reality is that the future is here, and this vision is already happening. As everyone knows, our industry has been slow to adopt electronic systems, but the FDA encourages an electronic future with Part 11 regulations and guidance documents. The best way to move to an electronic future is to offer solutions that save time, improve compliance, and promote collaboration. And I underline collaboration here because with all the systems that are on the market, there are many that can actually make improvements in this area and we need to get everybody on the same page and collaborating a lot more efficiently to make this work. Now efficiencies are created with consistency and standard processes. Therefore, sites need an across the board solution instead of fragmented processes. If you talk to any site, basically they have fragmented processes across all their studies. They're filing different for each study. They're, they're having to accommodate all of these differences and some standardization would really benefit them. Now sites and sponsors alike will receive great benefit from the utilization of a site-based deregulatory system, and we'll discuss that as we go through these slides. After working with many sites and teaching them how to transition into an e-regulatory system, I have to say the results are in. E-regulatory systems have proven their value and are the future of regulatory management and clinical research. Now what you see here is what we call the legacy regulatory system, or what I call the old school method. This is what most of your sites look like currently. And it requires a tremendous amount of printing, scanning, and other clerical tasks. Sites are receiving emails, paper records, they're even downloading records from portals. They eventually put those records into their own shared network drive, such as a local drive or Dropbox, and then they're having to print those records and put them into these inefficient paper regulatory binders. So basically, we're taking electronic files, which are pretty efficient um, by nature, and we're printing them into an inefficient system, such as paper regulatory binders, which I like to call the dinosaurs of clinical research. Now, as we go through this presentation, I hope that I make a good argument as to why I believe these dinosaurs actually need to go extinct. Now, research sites know all the problems with the paper-based system, but let's go over some of these uh, right here. So sites do have slow study startup time, and a lot of this has to do with routing paper and gathering signatures, um, and that's very inefficient. And they have high maintenance costs, both in time and resources. They waste a lot of time routing documents and tracking wedding signatures. I've talked to numerous sites that actually have to drive around their, their own city, dropping off records at various doctor's offices, only to drive back a day or two later to gather those signatures. That's very inefficient. The paper-based system has redundant filing of records because we have a lack of centralized filing for things like CVs or calibration records. Uh, all of these records that we tend to have for every study, but uh, we have to file multiple times. The legacy system is prone to lost or misplaced records. How many times have we had a, an inspection or an audit or a monitor's coming and we're searching for papers that we know were there, but we just can't find them at the moment? There's also space and storage costs associated with, uh, with the paper binders, and these things will eat up your real estate. They start to consume your office. There's no backup copies available with this type of system, and this is huge because we have to worry about fire, we have to worry about floods, all of those physical elements. 
that can destroy paper. It also puts a burden on sponsors because they have to physically travel to sites just to review these paper records. And then lastly, there's a large environmental impact. Um, just think about all the trees that actually go into supporting research documentation. Now on top of the legacy system, we now have sponsor portals. And these are great. They solve a problem for the sponsor, but they're not exactly solving problems for the site. You know, sponsors do need to get their critical records, and this works very well for them, but it's still keeping sites with paper binders and their old legacy system. And so there's got to be a better way. With these sponsor portals, this is what the system looks like for sites. You have investigators and their staff still filing records in their paper investigator site file. But now they're also double filing into a sponsor portal. You have the sponsor and the CRO. They're using their sponsor portal and the investigator site file. So they're using a combination of electronic and paper. And then if the IRB was to perform an audit or if the FDA needed to do an inspection, they have to rely on those paper records. And so you can see kind of how this, this uh, system is messy. Now, there are a lot of inefficiencies with this. Obviously, sponsor portals maintain an electronic trial master file for sponsors, but sites are still needing to maintain that paper investigator site file. Sponsor portals limit the number of site users. So while portals increase collaboration with the sponsor, they don't really improve the collaboration internally for the site and their research staff. Basically, you can only add so many users and not everybody has access to the records. Sponsor portals, they also increase redundant filing of records across studies. So as you saw in the last visual, we're filing records multiple times in all of our studies, but then we're also having to file those inside the, the, monitor, or the sponsor portal. Now on-site and off-site storage of paper records is still required for sites. Sites are now having to juggle multiple login credentials and training portals, depending on how many studies they have going on. Basically, sites are unable to streamline their filing process because they're still relying on paper. And this one's a huge uh, issue for me um, that I've noticed is that sponsor portals typically don't su support implementation of electronic signatures. Now, there are some out there that do. Uh, but again, you can only put limited amounts of users inside the system, and so only select people can actually use electronic signatures, but sites need a across-the-board solution for all of their staff. Now, Realtime believes that the solution to this is a site-based e-regulatory system, and what we've created is Realtime eDocs, and just to give you an idea of how this looks compared to the uh, sponsor portal and legacy system, basically you have this electronic binder. Your investigator staff, they have privilege-based access to upload and manage records within the binder, and they can also request and sign records electronically. Now your sponsors and CROs, they're able to access the same binder uh, through a sponsor portal uh, that's web-based. Even IRBs and the FDA can access this through web portals if they need to. And now this is great because we've eliminated paper, the sponsor and the CRO has complete access to their records. They can actually review records within the system, track what they've reviewed, issue queries, and they can also extract files from the system for their trial master file if needed. Now, when building a site-based solution, we have to think about the internal processes at a research site. And what becomes very clear is that they really need central filing. They need a central filing location for various records. And the way our system works is we have a MyDoc section for each user in the system. And this is where you're going to have central filing for your training and qualification records, such as CVs, licenses, and DCP training. These items only need to be uploaded once. And so if you're thinking about moving towards e-regulatory, make sure that these are filed centrally in the system and that you're not having to upload these for every single study that you have. 
Also, make sure that it has some type of way to track and notify staff of document expiration dates, such as our professional education training and tracking system. Also, a central location that we've uh, developed is for site docs. And so these are site level records, such as calibration records and temperature logs, even your lab CLIA. Anything that's a site level record can go in here. And again, it only needs to be uploaded once, and it tracks and notifies staff of expiration dates. The last section is basically your study regulatory binder and your study specific documents. Anything study specific gets uploaded to the study docs section. Now, anything in your my docs or site docs will be automatically filed for you. So we have that challenge of redundant filing in our legacy system, but as we move to e-regulatory, these things should be taken care of for you. Investigator staff, monitors, auditors, and inspectors can all gain web portal access. And so by making this accessible by everyone, you can see where the collaboration is coming together. And you can also see where central filing is going to streamline processes for the site. Now, just to give you another visual of how documents flow through a site-based solution, basically, you have three places you can upload, as I mentioned earlier. Now, if you upload something to MyDocs or SiteDocs, these are central locations. So they will automatically get filed into your study docs. And that study doc section is where your monitor will be able to review records, issue queries, and extract files for the trial master file. That's also the area that your FDA inspector will be able to review records. Now, some of the advantages of a site-based solution, such as eDocs, it's going to eliminate your paper legacy systems and re reduce the regulatory burden. Now, we all know that this burden is growing, and so why not move towards some technology that's actually going to reduce that burden, burden for you? It centralizes common records to eliminate redundant filing. It increases collaboration between investigators, site staff, sponsors, CROs, IRBs, even auditors and inspectors. And so this isn't a one-way communication. This is communication for everyone. And not to mention, this communication is preserved in the system. It increases efficiency by using electronic signatures. No, no more do you have to drive around town to collect signatures hoping that that document wasn't lost. You can simply send out a request, and what used to take days might actually take minutes now. It accelerates the study startup process because you don't have to print paper at the beginning of a study anymore. You're simply filling these out electronic and sending them out for signatures. And once you gather all those documents, you can submit them uh, without ever using paper. And of course, it allows remote access monitoring. And this is great for sites that, uh, that just want to take advantage of remote access. We have some sites where their regulatory person is in a completely different city than uh, where their main site is. And then also, it's great for monitors because they can look at this binder anytime they choose. And then, of course, the PET system allows you to track your education and training records. Now, if you make a site-based e-regulatory system your, your main standard operating procedure for regulatory processes, it will maintain audit read readiness for you. And any time an auditor or an inspector shows up, you simply issue a, a portal, and that takes seconds to do. It will eliminate paper-based binders and storage costs. And heck, it'll even eliminate paper cuts, three-ring binder pinching, late-night archiving parties, and that general feeling of nausea associated with paper binders. And I know a lot of you out there know what I'm talking about. It creates a standard filing system across all studies to improve consistency and regulatory compliance. Standardizing your filing system is going to create a lot of efficiency for sites. Uh, I can't even speak to the volume of that. Now, something that's really great about site-based solutions is that you can integrate with current technology. And I'm talking about true technology or true integration. And what I mean by true integration, basically, these systems were built together. They're built to talk to one another. They were built to act as one system. Now, while eDocs comes as a standalone system, we do have the ability to integrate with our CTMS to provide additional features such as ICF tracking and in-system notifications. So just to give you an idea of how this works, 
basically when the site receives a new ICF and that's uploaded into their eDocs, that's communicated directly to the visit tracking in their CTMS and notifies their CRC if there's a new consent for that person to sign at their next visit. I mean, how cool is that? Now also, these systems can integrate with other technology that you use, such as Outlook. And that allows you to sign records electronically and file records straight from your inbox. You don't even have to log into your e-regulatory system to do this. Now after working with many sites, I've seen the successful sites and I've seen the sites that have struggled. And I know what makes them successful um, whenever they transition from paper to electronic. And over time I've developed a formula here basically with five steps to think about whenever you start to implement a new regulatory system. Number one, make a solid commitment to eradicate paper-based processes. This commitment can be in the form of an oath, a handshake, a fist bump, or even a pinky swear, however you want to do it. But just make sure that you jump in with both feet in the water and that you're ready to eradicate that paper-based nightmare that you have at your site. Now, number two, set goals and expectations and obtain staff buy-in. Furthermore, make sure that these goals are clear and that the expectations are well known so that your staff, are, staff is not confused. Um, Whenever you're obtaining buy-in from your staff, it's important to let them know why you have these goals and expectations and this solid commitment. Let them know that this is gonna bring efficiencies to their, their job. They're not gonna have to hunt down signatures anymore. They don't have to deal with paper binders anymore. Everything's gonna be streamlined for them. Number three, assign a champion to keep the commitment alive. Now when I say champion, this can be an individual or a team of individuals but just make sure that you have someone there to help your staff when they run into obstacles because they'll need to turn that obstacle or they'll have to find a solution for that obstacle. Number four, standardize regulatory processes across all studies. So earlier we were talking about fragmented processes at sites and this is something sites face every day, but a new regulatory system should be able to help you standardize those processes across all of your studies. You'll be filing the same, routing records the same, gathering signatures the same. Everything should be streamlined when you adopt a, a new regulatory system. And number five, communicate the benefits of the eDoc system to sponsors and CROs. And now this is a critical component. While these systems are becoming more normal for sites to have, sponsors and sites may ask some questions about it. And so be sure to let them know that, hey, this eDoc system or this e-regulatory system is our standard regulatory process. It helps us streamline our regulatory processes. And not only that, it helps, it helps streamline your monitoring process, so you're gonna love it. And if we can streamline all those processes, we're saving time. And if I can save time, then I can recruit more patients and conduct more study visits. So just communicate that to them. Now, if you want to read a little bit more on these uh, steps on implementing, feel free to visit the real-time website uh, where I wrote an article called Five Steps to Successfully Implement a Site-Centric E-Regulatory System, and that'll give you a little bit more deep details. Now, there are some common concerns for sites that I've come across repeatedly. One of them is that making the switch from paper regulatory binders to e-regulatory binders can seem daunting. This is a completely legitimate uh, concern because switching from paper-based processes to an electronic process is going to be an initial investment of time, but it's well worth the transition to streamline your regulatory processes. Now, if you do follow the steps that we outlined in the previous slide for implementing a regulatory system, um, you will find it a lot easier to make this transition happen. Now, another concern that we have from sites is that sites have a feeling of uncertainty when switching from paper to electronic records. They wonder if sponsors and CROs and even the FDA are accepting this new technology. And hey, I get it. This is a 
big investment in technology that's going to change your processes. And not only that, you're in a regula regulated environment. And so we do want to make sure that they are accepting this. The reality is that the FDA actually paves the road towards site-based solutions or solutions using Part 11 regulations and guidance documents. Most sponsors and CROs are already using Part 11 compliant technology, so they fully trust it. We have electronic trial master files, EDC systems, e-source systems, even e-regulatory systems. These are all Part 11 compliant systems. And another thing to keep in mind is that site-based systems are becoming the norm. And I think this is only going to grow from here. In fact, Realtime was actually on a call not too long ago with a large sponsor um, who was asking a little bit more detail about our system because they wanted to know, uh, they wanted some assurance basically before they let this site use uh, e So once we gave them some details on the system and how it's going to benefit everyone, this sponsor actually uh, decided to be open-minded and, and allow the site to use this system. And they even wanted to revisit their own SOPs to accommodate that site. And so the reality is, is this is becoming the norm. And not only are sites getting benefits from it, but sponsors are as well. The next one is, with low profit margins for research sites, the cost of adopting an e-regulatory system can seem scary at first. And I completely get this. I know it's incredibly hard for, for research sites in, in this industry. Just keep in mind that the hard costs alone of a paper-based system over the course of a study will be higher than the cost of any site-based e-regulatory system. When you start adding up all the resources, supplies, physical storage, et cetera, the cost is enormous. In addition to hard costs, there's soft costs. Now, these are more difficult to calculate but they may even add up more than the hard costs. These are things like clerical tasks, gathering records and signatures, even filing and searching for records. We also have opportunity costs, and these are extremely high. With the right e-regulatory system, you should be streamlining your processes, which will allow you to spend less time routing paper and records for signatures and spend more time recruiting patients and conducting visits. And as we all know, recruiting patients and conducting visits, those are the key drivers for revenue at your site to improve business viability. Now, not only do sites have concerns, but the sponsors do too. And so let's kind of go over some of these. Sponsors want to know if the system is compliant, secure, and reliable. Now, HIPAA compliance and Part 11 compliance, these aren't difficult. But I think we tend to make them difficult. It's simply a combination of SOPs, system features, and validation documentation. And so your software vendor will be able to help you with this. And it's really not as difficult as we, we think it is. Through data encryption and system features, e-regulatory systems are far more secure than paper. Now, I come from a QA background, and one of my major fears was something would happen that affects the integrity of the data on a study. And one of those things could be a forgery of a signature. Um, you don't want anybody forging signatures on any of your paper records. So basically, with an e-regulatory system, someone would have to literally get inside another person's head and get their password to forge a signature. And so as long as you're keeping your password secret and and not writing them down or sharing them, no one can forge your signatures. Now, the right e-regulatory vendor will also utilize a world-class data center with safeguards to mitigate risks and have a thorough risk management and disaster recovery plan in place. And so this will take care of that reliability question. Sponsors want to know that their records are going to be there when they need them and that they have access to them uh, during those critical moments. And one thing that you can do as a site is obtain a third-party audit certificate from your software vendor. And so while there is no certifying body that says, hey, this software is Part 11 compliant, vendors can have a third-party auditor come in to make sure that they do have those SOPs and features in place. And once you have that audit certificate, that will take care of 
probably 95% of the sponsor's concerns. Some sponsors may not understand the benefit of a site-based system and possibly view it as more work for their monitors. And so I put this one in here just so we can maybe understand a little bit where monitors are coming from. Um, but with the right system that increases collaboration between sites and monitors, these systems will provide remote access, query management, improved communication, record review tracking, and many more features that streamline the monitoring process. That monitor should be able to go into the portal and know exactly what's been reviewed and what still needs to be reviewed and what communication they've already had with the site. These systems will also cut traveling costs and or make existing visits to the site more effective for monitors. If a site has a monitoring visit, the monitor can literally go into that regulatory binder beforehand and check out all the documents and get that over with before the visit. Once they show up, they'll have more time to focus more on the actual patient data and maybe training the staff and helping prevent some of those issues that we might have at the site because of lack of training or monitoring. Now the system increases collaboration between the sponsor and investigator. And this is how it should be. It should be a, a teamwork approach. And I truly believe that if you have an e-regulatory system with a great monitor portal, that monitor is going to love the portal, they're going to love working with you, and they're going to want to bring more business back to you. Now, I have some feedback from sites that have used the site-based technology. And this one is a site owner multiple types of technology. Um, they've used several e-regulatory, they've used several CTMS, and they gave us a feedback on eDocs just saying, this is the best piece of technology that I've deployed at my sites in nine years. Staff and monitors love it. So just by saying staff and monitors love it, you know that there's good collaboration there. Now this one was actually solicited um, from a, a quality assurance manager at a large site. This person basically said, using real-time eDocs is creating much needed efficiencies in our regulatory department so our staff can focus on important tasks. Having customizable templates, a central location for site documents, electronic signatures, as well as the ability to drag and drop files and create certified copies of documents enables us to streamline our processes. It's refreshing to work with a company who listens to its customers and offers valuable solutions. We even have some feedback from sponsors um, this is actually a common question that I get is, what are sponsors saying about this system? And so just to give you some context on this, we had a site that let their monitor know that we have this great new system and we want you to use it. So we're going to send you some login information and check it out. The lead CRA said, yeah, shoot it my way. I'll, I'll tell you exactly what I think. And so she immediately sent an email back to the site saying, let me just say I love this system. I like that everything is clear and easy to find, including correspondence. It eliminates the need for any copies anywhere other than here. I also like that I can communicate with site personnel and the system provides the communication. And so whenever you're choosing a system, just make sure that there's some type of communication between the monitor and the site, uh, because that adds a whole new element that monitors really enjoy um, whenever they're using your system. And it's going to make your job a lot easier as well being able to communicate directly through the system. Now, I really believe the time is now. The time is now for our industry to take the next step in collaboration in ways that benefit all parties. You know, sites need consistent policies and procedures across all studies. Sponsors can help encourage this by embracing and incorporating these systems into their monitoring plan. And remember, for sponsors, they have to keep in mind that these are professional sites using these systems to streamline their regulatory processes for everyone. Uh, this isn't just so the site can gain benefit, this is so the whole research industry can gain benefit, because it all starts at the site level. Now the solution is a site-based e-regulatory system such as real-time eDocs, the first and only fully CTMS integrated Part 11 compliant e-regulatory document solution on the market. Now, it's one thing to kind of learn about these site-based solutions um, 
in an overview or learn how they're connecting people and connecting the sponsor and site in a presentation. But if you want to see what it does live, feel free to call us or shoot us an email. I'll be glad to walk you through the system and explain to you how it meets your current regulatory processes and maybe shifts those over to be more efficient. So feel free to call us. And at this time, I'm willing to take uh, any questions you may have, and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. Great. Thank you so much for your presentation. Um, as Nathan mentioned, you can type your questions in the box on the right-hand side, and we'll read some out. Okay, Nathan. So when transitioning to an e-regulatory system, should sites focus on new studies only, or should they also upload old studies into the system? Okay, that's a great question. Um, I get this a lot because sites want to know how they're making this transition. And I highly encourage, once you adopt a system like this, focus on new studies starting up. Uh, there's a couple of reasons why you want to do this. Now, number one, you don't want to have to backtrack and upload all those paper records. That, that could create a nightmare for you. And number two, you don't want to switch the process on your monitor or sponsor in the middle of a study. Uh, a lot of sites are already getting electronic records from their sponsors when they're starting up, so you can simply upload them and start from there. Um, but if your sponsors are still shipping paper records to you at the beginning, just let them know, hey, we got this great new system that's going to streamline processes for everyone, and I can save you the trouble of shipping everything if you just want to send me the electronic files. Great question. Great. Um, and we have one more. Um, about how long does it take to implement a new e-regulatory system? And this one's kind of a loaded question. Um, it really depends. Now, to actually get your technology set up and train your staff, this can be in a matter of days, possibly even less than a week. Um, where it really um, gets unpredictable is after you adopt this technology, it depends solely on the site's ability to affect change in their industry or in their their company. And so what I highly encourage sites to do is follow those five steps for implementing the system that I talked about. Jump in with both feet. Don't have one feet foot in the water and one foot out. And what I mean by that is don't have a combination of paper processes and electronic processes. Try to go as electronic as you can uh, because you create more inefficiencies if you don't make that jump to electronic. Great. Well, thank you, Nathan, for your presentation. Um, that seems to be all the time we have for now, but thank you for attending. And if you could all take a minute to fill out the survey at the end of the webinar, we would greatly appreciate it. Um, so thank you, and have a great rest of the day.